Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And before I begin, I wish to pay tribute to my predecessor in this role, the Honourable Member for Glasgow East, who has worked very hard, and I wish him well in his new portfolio area. I'm delighted to participate in this debate on the Towns Fund, which was unveiled to great fanfare in July 2019, a fund totalling £3.6 billion, billed as a means by which towns and cities could be levelled up. A laudable aim indeed, and well done to all the towns which have benefited. But the Towns Fund is mired in controversy. And allegations of port barrel politics simply won't go away. We've heard today from a number of members how nearly two thirds of the towns awarded funds were target Tory seats in the general election that followed a mere two months after the awards had been made. Of the 100 towns invited to work with the government on new town deals worth up to £25 million, 61 were marginal seats. Are we to believe, Mr Deputy Speaker, this was purely coincidence? What are the public supposed to think when the two housing ministers who were involved in the distribution of the Towns Fund had towns in their own constituencies benefiting from this fund weeks before an election? And the Secretary of State will surely recall how, on the one hand, he denied having any involvement in his constituency benefiting from a £25 million grant weeks before the general election, yet during the general election taking credit for that grant. This only feeds allegations and suspicions of pork barrel politics. What we do know is that the Ministry for Housing, Communities and Local Government drew up a ranked priority list of towns for the fund based on need and the potential for development, and another 61 medium and low priority locations were also chosen. The smell is so bad that the Public Accounts Committee, in a damning report, concluded that it was not convinced by the rationale for selecting some towns and not others, with justifications offered by ministers for selecting individual towns as vague and based on sweeping assumptions, and that the system gave every appearance of being politically motivated. And, Mr Deputy Speaker, this damning report is even more astonishing when you consider that the majority of the members on the Public Accounts Committee are Tory MPs. This might seem to members of the public to be what in Commons parlance might be called a fair cop. And that's why there's so much concern about the Shared Prosperity Fund, which is also looking suspiciously like it might be perceived as just another political tool. But we still don't know how the Shared Prosperity Fund will work or when it will be made available. But we do know that the Scottish Government consultation on this fund shows a clear majority favouring a Scottish-led fund reflecting Scottish policy priorities. And we remember the grand words of the Communities Minister in 2019, who said that as far as the UK Prosperity Fund was concerned, the devolution settlement would be respected. Let us hope that that will be the case. But there is growing unease about how public funds, as in the case of the Towns Fund, which are supposed to be for the promotion of the public good, instead are used for political ends. This has been followed by questions being raised about a lack of trans transparency and accountability as to how public money has been spent, both with regards to the Towns Fund and the awarding of contracts generally. And this is why my honourable friend, the honourable member for Midlothian, has brought forward a private member's bill which seeks much greater accountability and transparency for the public purse. If towns funds are truly to help towns, the deployment of cash must be more transparent and based on need. Now, the stench around the Towns Fund is pretty strong, and it's deeply concerning if the same questionable criteria are applied to the UK Prosperity Fund. Public money is just that. It's the public's money, not a resource to be deployed for political or other purposes. It must be used transparently and in the public's interest. And I say to the Minister, if something smells very bad, it often is because it is very bad. So what assurances can the Minister give this House following the publication of the Public Accounts Committee report? And in order to address concerns about the administration of the UK Prosperity Fund, will he commit today to ensuring this will be administered by the Scottish Government and the devolution settlement will be respected, as was promised, when this fund eventually sees the light of day?